good morning from the hash knife. Well, I'm going to show you a little bit of what we have to do to winterize. This isn't winterizing with water or systems like that. We got a little fencing issue here. It's really not fencing, but it is. It's part of a fence. If you want to get technical about it, this cattle guard allows trucks and cars and stuff to go through, but it also fills up with dirt. We got some guys that are throwing some dirt up here on the county, washes down, and it just overwhelms it. So occasionally you got to clean these things out, make them so that snow can fall down through them. And uh, we've had issues like that before. We can probably talk about some day, but that's on today's agenda, this morning anyway. So we got to take the beast here, lift this thing up, and I got some barricades to put up because people don't watch when they drive, believe it or not. That old muscle memory and I know where I'm going and what I gotta do and I'm just gonna get there. So I gotta stick a couple of roadblocks up, open a gate so people can pass through. So hang around with us. Welcome everybody, this is Kalen. And instead of uh, having you listen to the constant wind and the uh, creaking and squeaking and rattling of the John Deere tractor that we've got, I'm actually gonna do a voiceover for some of these episodes, not episodes, but segments. And uh, all I've done is I've taken a lot of the footage that dad sent me and I've multiplied it in speed by two and a half percent. And uh, here we go. So right now he's honestly just hooking the trailer or the uh, bucket up to the cattle guard. And he's going to use that using those chains and those chains are good and everything. But if you'll notice the one thing that he's doing, that's a little dangerous is in front of that bucket right now with the, uh, the vehicle going, the, the tractor going, but he does have it in park and everything, but that's, that's a risk that he's kind of taking right now because uh, when something moves, you can't get your feet out of those cattle guard slits very easily. So he's definitely taking a risk putting himself in front of that bucket, but he's, he's doing what he's got to do because he doesn't have any help on, uh, on this particular instant. So otherwise it'd be me and, and maybe my brother helping uh, get some of the stuff chained up and, and done and things would be getting done quicker. But Anyway, what he's going to do is he's going to take this since he's got it all hooked up and slowly pull up. And again, we're going at two and a half times the rate that we normally would because I've just taken the video and, and gone faster with it, but going nice and easy picking it up. And now that he's gotten it out of the bunker, he's just going to back up and he's going to park it off to the side. And we're going to take our time real quick, pull it over off the road. And like he said, he's going to, he already has those barriers set up so that some vehicles like the ones that are passing by right now wouldn't accidentally just come into the roadway and take themselves into the pit. That's a, <laughs> that'd be a bad deal. And it'd probably ruin somebody's day, but he's going to come over. All he's going to do is unhook those chains from the bucket itself and leaving them on the cattle guard and that cattle guard. It's going to be an easy way for him to just pick it up again. And, uh, use it at the end of this whole project to, to set it right back in place. So again, going, going a little fast on the video, he's going to come right back up and he's going to start digging and you're going to see, he's going to take that bucket and he's going to go pretty much straight down to try and get some of that dirt out. The only issue is those grapples at the end, you'll see they, there's somewhat of a limiting factor and he is going from downhill towards the uphill side, which also doesn't make it easier. It takes probably a couple inches away from him, but he makes it work for today and he's just going to keep digging, digging, digging. You'll see it over the course of the next 20 minutes or so. He takes small chunks and, and takes the dirt and moves it to the side. And then he just puts it away and he'll keep going back and forth, back and forth and continue this whole process until he's done. Now, if you want to get past some of this stuff, you're not really interested in seeing the bucket. I recommend getting somewhere I'm looking on my timeline here somewhere around the 12 minute range you should be able to see him talk again but like I said up until then I'll just kind of voice over for what's going on with the the bucket and what he's doing to to get this all knocked out so he's going to go over that opposite side now you'll see that those big triangles have been separated from the cow guard prior to him pulling it out and that's what allowed him to actually pull it off the ground but He's getting as close as he can to that triangle without actually hitting it because that triangle does provide some security because if you see the closest one to us, it's got some cow panel up against it that keeps the animals, the horses and the cows together from going underneath that triangle and completely bypassing the cattle guard. 
Now, if you've never seen a cattle guard before, what you might be asking, well, what's the purpose of this? Well, dad already did explain it a little bit and it's to allow vehicles to travel through while still maintaining a fence. But at the same time, it leaves a giant gap within the fence itself. And what it will actually do is it allows the vehicles to continue to go through, but because there are slits in between the metal pieces that allow the vehicles to travel over the top, the animals see those slits and they will not walk across it. And the reason why he, again, is going to be using this whole day to clean it and get rid of it is because if it gets filled with snow or ice over the next few months as we go into winter, those animals might think about going across. And we actually had an incident a couple of years ago where an, a horse did go across because the local county crew filled in the cattle guard and the horse did not see it. Somehow he managed to get across to the other side. And then when he came back, he broke his leg and we had to euthanize him. So that's why we do it is because this has real term consequences. When the animals can't see it, we end up paying the cost in terms of finances, but they pay the cost in terms of their lives. And we don't want that. It's, it's a deterrent to keep them from going across the fence. It's not supposed to be a, a life-threatening manner. Uh, so again, he's going to keep, keep digging this. He's getting really some big chunks out of it. And is, if you'll see being really careful, he's going up against that concrete barrier, but he's not trying to scrape it or anything like that. And he's going very slow. Again, we're going two and a half times the speed it normally is. And part of that's because we're using hydraulics, right? So hydraulics really, they need to be the feathered kind of taken care of. Uh, you start jerking that stuff around. That's how you blow hoses, you blow joints. Um, and then it's just overall, it's harder on your equipment. So now he's going to park this and he's going to come out. He's looking at it, kind of taking an idea of what he needs to get done. And he's going to start clearing off that top part of the barrier, which you can kind of see closest to us. And he's going to take that and just start pulling it across. And you can see it. He, after that, he, he kind of cleared it, got it loosened up really is what he did. And so he's going to try it from the other end. People might be going, is this reverse? Nope. It's actually, it is going forwards in terms of uh, the film. What he is doing is he's just backing up because it actually tends to be more efficient rather than turning that giant John Deere tractor around in that tight space. So he's just going to, you'll see over the next few segments, he goes back and forth the same direction, just uses reverse and forwards. That's all. But you'll see those grapples to the left there they're getting really close to that dirt and it does make it a little more difficult to be able to get that bucket deeper in there, but he makes, he somehow manages to make it work, uh, especially with no spotters. It's really hard to do. Uh, if we've got typically a spotter down there, giving you hand signals, it makes this a whole lot faster and a whole lot easier, but he's dad managed to do it all by himself. Um, I mean, it's not that he doesn't have the ability to do it. It just, like I said, makes it far more difficult than it really needs to be. So he's going to take this pile of dirt. I'm not sure what he did with the dirt. Um, that might be a question I could ask him one of these days, but he did not take the dirt. I don't, I don't know what he did. If it's in a pile or if it's in uh, he's, he's dumping it in a, a trailer of some sort or something like that. Cause the, we do use this topsoil, believe it or not for other things, small projects, particularly my mother's projects with uh, some of the wind breaks and stuff that she has uh, ideas with, because if you can't tell, there's a lot of wind where we come from. So making wind breaks with shrubs, trees, plants, and stuff like that is actually very helpful. So using this sometimes is, is kind of a godsend in a way, but yeah, he, again, he's on this closest one. You'll see he's getting really close to that triangle, trying to keep the it's, it's both a brace and a deterrent, like I said, but he's getting really close to it and he's keeping an eye on it. He's, he's got that big open windshield in the cab of the, tractor that he's able to look at and he's he's able to get a good idea of where he's at and everything and that's why he's also able to get so deep um some people might go well that's not very impressive he's not getting a lot with each bite and, and then anybody who's handled tractors like this you might be surprised to be like oh yeah that's that's a pretty good bite um especially because if you think about it when it comes to using these big buckets it's actually in a weird way it's like using a if, if you're used to using your fine motor skills with your fingers and you can take your thumb and touch your pinky and you can pick up very small things and, and you have great control over it, then you go to using a hook. It's really hard, but, uh, there's going to be a car that comes across here. So somebody came up, yep, there they go. And, uh, he dad stopped him and said, Hey, I got the, I got the road blocked off. I opened the gate. So go ahead and take that way. And, and people might go, well, why do you have a cattle guard and a gate? Well, the gates actually for when we're moving cattle, it allows us 
to bypass the cattle guard. So the cows know they can't go over the cattle guard, but we can pull them with using the goodies and stuff across that, uh, that gate. And it gets us from one pasture to another, because this, in this particular instance is an open range pasture with a County road easement going through it. So that's why it's so important for that cattle guard to be there. Cause it's got to allow the traffic, but we still need to keep our cattle taken care of. But like I said, you're looking at this bucket here and he's going real slow taking it nice and easy. And again, those fine motor skills versus those gross motor skills. It's, it's like taking, you know, those fine motor skills of touching your fingers and being able to pick up a ring or a, or a small washer or something. Right. And then all of a sudden you no longer have that. You have a, either a, a dummy hand or you have a, a hook of some sort. And suddenly you have to pick up that same ring. It's a, it's a different process and you gotta be really careful, be nice and easy about it. And then, uh, figure it out but yeah here he goes again he's going to take him from the, from the opposite direction again so he started on this side went to the other side now he's going back just trying to get a bunch of that dirt taken out as much as possible because each side that he goes he continues to take a little bit out of it and also push it to the other side so he's just trying to get some of that that uh leftover so to speak and he's going to get a nice little bite there not impressive but it, it works and with that, it looks like dad's going to talk again here in the next segment. So I'll hold on. Well, this is where I got to do a little bit of shovel work. We're not going to get it all, but I want to get deep enough in the center there where I can clean off the sides, smooth it out, call it good. Yeah. So as he said, he's going to just clean off some of that, that part on the barrier, make sure he gets that nice and clear, nice and easy and crisp. Uh, not only so he can see it, but then also the cattle guard can kind of settle into it simultaneously. What he's going to do is he's working in this little trough is he's going to spread all of that dirt out. And you'll see at the very end of the video towards the 22 to 24 mark, he is making that dirt as level as possible underneath. So it's, it's not super deep on the middle and then shallow on the edges. It's the same depth all the way across. And that's not only for safety of the animal, but it's also for that depth perception, because if you can see the depth across the whole thing, that same way, it makes it much more easier to discern. And of course it keeps the, the snow, the ice and additional dirt over time from building up from those edges and filling in those edges, which will allow the animals to get a little more brave than they should, you know? So this is what it looks like after he's gotten through with one side. You can see the difference where he's really gotten that nice and crisp and, and cleared out versus behind him. He's still got a bunch of that dirt left over there. And he'll clear it out, but you can see how big of a difference that is just in him taking these few minutes to really, really focus on pulling out some of that dirt, making sure it's gone, and making sure that there is a shelf for the cattle guard to sit on. And you can see right there too, see how that buildup is not having it pushed towards the middle creates that buildup, which also allows for more and more filling on the edges. And again, that more filling on the edge allows the animals to think that they can go across and can result in potentially a life-threatening injury. And he's going to take over again. All right. There's that side. Over in the middle. Gotta clean this up. Cement base, these are Jersey barriers. I have a place for this to set, and then uh, we get in business. I'll do one final clean out after I get this all kind of bedded down in here off these sides. Nice place to set it, kind of pull it away from the walls, and then we'll call her Finito. All right, and just like that, if you didn't already hear all that wind and and the scraping and everything, that's that's why I'm trying to do a voiceover because I don't want you having to hear that, but. You can see again, he's going through on the other side now and that big difference of, of all the ground and dirt that he is pulling away and taking off of that shelf to allow for the cattle guard to set in, making that much easier. And then just as he was chipping right there, the dirt that is built up on the edge of the concrete, same thing. He's going to go back through just like he did on the other side behind him where you can see that shelf. And he's going to make sure that that shelf is exposed. He's already gotten most of it done here, pulling it off the top. And then he's going to start working underneath that corner, making sure it's nice and open and it's flattened out across the bottom of the cattle guard to make sure that there is actually that universal depth all the way across from one side to the other, instead of having it look like a, 
a giant hill that goes into the middle with a, a little ravine. So he's going to finish up here on the shelf and then he's going to start chipping away. And here he goes. Yeah. Just pull that stuff out. It's hard work. If you, if you think this is easy work, <laughs> you're wrong. He's, he's working a lot of back and shoulder muscles here. And honestly, that's why typically when I was growing up, he had me and Braden do this because we needed to get our butts worked. But he's doing it all by himself right now, and he's getting through it. And again, everybody, I recognize people probably see how fast he's uh, working, but if if you're just kind of checking in at this point, it's still two and a half percent or two and a half times, sorry, two and a half times faster than what normally it is. And uh, that was just due to my editing. So now he's going to, transition here to some more tractor work he's gonna try and get a couple more bites out of it i think is what he said let's take a gander here yep nice and easy just getting that lip over the edge of the concrete barrier and he's gonna try and sink it push forward there it is and pull that dirt right out of there see how many more bucketfuls he can get Nice and easy. Again, gross, gross motor work here. Nice and easy. Try and tip that bucket, get a little bit more, and then pull it up, and let's see what we can do. There it is. Yeah, and he'll have to go back over. He did push some uh, dirt back up onto that ledge, but that's all right. He'll use the shovel work to just pull that real quick. He's going to take the dirt away, put it away, and then he should be coming right back around here momentarily and doing that probably a little closer to us. If not, he's going to try and take another good chunk out of that same side again. Yep, there it is. He came a little closer. Going to do the same thing. Watch those grapples. The big thing. Get that edge over. There you go. He's got the edge over or the lip over the edge of the bucket. You know, sink it. See how much dirt he can get. And you can, if you're paying attention, those grapples keep they keep popping the asphalt on the other side every once in a while, and it it's one of the most limiting factors of this. It's kind of a pain. It's kind of frustrating, but when there's only one of you, that's all that you can do. Looks like he's going to take another bucket out of this, another, the same side that he was already on. Drop it right here. And let's see if those grapples hit. Ooh, looks like he got clear. Good job. Oh, there they were. <laughs> I spoke too soon. Just going nice and easy, nice and easy. So that's the next worst thing is he get him, he gets himself stuck in there and then he's got to figure out a way to get the tractor out. Now, using the bucket, you can probably push yourself out, but there are times where you might get yourself in enough of a bind that that doesn't work and you got to go get some help. So still just taking his time. This is one of those things where slow is smooth and smooth is fast. You know, take your time because if you get in a hurry, then it's just going to cause more issues and make you do this a whole lot longer than you want to be doing it. He's going to take one more chunk out of this very edge here closest to us. And he's going to try and get up to that barrier on the other side, take a good bucket full. That looks like a good bite right there. Yeah, he's got a bunch of it right there. Oh, he left some too. I think he did that on purpose, honestly, seeing how he did that. Um, and, I, and it might also be just him being cautious, knowing that that triangle and that support system for the cattle guards right there he doesn't want to push it and potentially swing over and twist that because that's the other worst thing that could happen you twist that you bust it or you damage it in some extent that now he cannot use the cattle guard and he might be wanting to put the herd in that day and not being able to have that cattle guard up could result in cows getting out on the highway that highway you've seen vehicles go by already they, they're driving 65 to 70 miles an hour and i guarantee some people are driving closer to 80 and they might be easy to discern right now, but as soon as it gets dark out, totally different atmosphere and, and getting your animals hit on the highway like that, you have nobody to blame but yourself at that extent. So now I think he's lining up to the cattle guard. He's going to get himself set in. And he's probably going to start hooking her up. Probably. We'll see here. Transition. Yeah, he's coming around. So he's getting it prepped. He didn't hook it up, but he's getting himself prepped because he knows it's next. He's going to do that one last sweep, go across. And again, he was working that other edge. So he's going to go back over that, make sure it's clear. 
just doing some quick cleanup stuff. Uh, people might be asking, well, why didn't he do this last since he's already doing this a second time? Well, he's again, he was trying to make sure that he was at the right levels and you want to make sure everything's kind of broken up because that does make it easier. Because if you're noticing also the dirt now is much more easier to move around. It's not as packed. It's much more loose and able to move around. So he's just going to take that and kind of scrape it. Um, the only thing I didn't see during this whole editing process was he didn't use a rake. I'm actually kind of surprised because that would have probably uh, been a lot easier to level it all out, but it, it worked for him. Everything seemed to come together and uh, he just had to do a little extra work more than he probably normally would have. But like I said, it worked out and you'll see, see how he's just kind of throwing it all around, making sure it's all nice and level that way. Again, animals can see it. It gives us plenty of space for any, snowstorms to come through and possibly fill it in because uh that is a that is a very good spot for all the snow to go uh it, it's on a on very often gets drifted on that road so knowing that there's going to be snow there is probably a reason why he's really making sure it's clear because uh he might actually have to go back over that this winter a couple times and use a snow shovel to clear this uh this closest side of snow or take a, a torch like we've done before to melt ice off of it. So now that he's got that all set up. It looks pretty level to me. Oh, he's got a lower end on that side. It looks like, so just kind of spreading it out, making sure it looks good, walking over it, making sure there's nothing that he can do a little bit better. Just quick checks. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Breaking up that stuff right there on the edge so that makes it easier for anything going underneath. You well, know, we don't want to dig too deep because I want these barriers to have a really nice solid base in which to sit so nothing moves. You don't want to start disturbing that foundation. So this is as far deep as I'm going to go. It's probably a good oh, foot and a half from the top of the cattle guard down to the bottom there. And this ground will settle a little bit, so it'll drop down a couple more inches. But now it's time to set her back. Yeah, and like he said, the really the important part is he doesn't want to go too deep because then he can potentially mess up the the integrity of those barriers. And that's the important part too. So he's already hooked up the chains off camera and now he's bringing it over. Now this is the hard part. Normally we'd grab one or two of us and put some chains on the, the corners, the opposite corners, and we'd help guide it in. So he could just kind of drop it. We could use the chains or the ropes to, to help maneuver it. So just quickly drop drops right into the slot that he needs. But again, dad's doing this all on his own right now. So he's going to use a little bit of finesse using those uh, gross motor skills in the cab a good pair of eyeballs and then he's going to drop it in he'll he gets it really close on this first shot but then uh, he decides to redo it here shortly and you'll see but for the most part that's that's cleaning the cattle guard now we've got three of these and uh he he did clean out the other two but uh, this is really the overall process that it takes for cleaning out a cattle guard and as you can see, this is probably 25 minutes of uh, film. A lot of it is two and a half times faster than it is in real life. And of course, he's doing other things that are off camera and then push and record when it's necessary. So if you can imagine this takes, you know, an hour or so in real time on just this footage, then uh, you can definitely guarantee that it'll take much longer than that in real life with everything involved. So with that, thanks for joining us all. And he'll share some last thoughts as we uh, finish out this video. Well, that depth perception is a little tough on a camera. So I'll just kind of take this standard shovel, drop it down there and I can see how far that is down to the bottom of that. So that's a nice, even, deep, Divide in there, snow can fall through, and we shouldn't have to worry too much. All right, that's how we fine tune things. So, put the nuts and bolts back together on these ends, and we'll call that a success. Thanks for sticking around, you guys.